The next biggest lever we can pull in terms of improving insulin signaling is different forms of activity. That's going to come through steps, that's going to come through cardio, and that's going to come through direct resistance training. All these different types of activity directly contribute to a net negative energy balance, which is directly improving the insulin sensitizing effects. But also, depending on the energy requirements of the activity, that's also going to dictate the hormonal signaling and the response as a byproduct. As a rule of thumb, the intensity of the exercise or activity that you're doing dictates the energy substrate requirements. So if you're doing something that's lower intensity, like walking, you get to tap into more fat stores because it's a slower turnover process. Whereas when you're doing something like an all-out set in the gym or you're doing a sprint, you're going to have to tap into glucose stores more directly to get this faster rate of energy production to get the job done in an anaerobic environment. So with the walking, again, just with the step count alone, let's say we hit 10K steps a day, that's about 500 calories of daily burn that contribute directly to creating a net negative energy balance. But irrespective of that, it's also improving our digestion, it's helping lower our blood pressure, and then it's also directly correlated to GLUT4 translocation. So independent of insulin, just the muscle contractions alone of walking are helping drive glucose into the muscle to basically allow our muscles to act like a sponge to allow that glucose in, but this is insulin independent. So just the muscle contractions alone stimulate this response to drive glucose into the muscle. As we're depleting this glycogen and turning it into glucose to use as energy during the workout, this now directly signals that GLUT4 response as well. This is why activity as a whole, but combining cardio and proper resistance training creates a compounding effect for improved insulin response. Because again, it's easier for you to create a net negative energy balance, and you're also just telling your muscles to actually use the glucose that's in your bloodstream more effectively, because it actually has somewhere to go. And also, the more muscle that you put on, the more more glucose you can actually tolerate because that's your primary fuel source for your muscles. So just as a byproduct of you having more muscle, you're directly improving insulin sensitivity. This is why being fatter creates insulin resistance and insulin resistance is so dangerous and it's a compounding issue. The more body fat that you have, the more pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF-A and IL-6 that you're throwing out, which are directly blunting that insulin response so you're worsening the efficiency of glucose uptake into the muscle directly. Now, because we've impaired this signaling, while your muscles technically have a total amount of glycogen that they can store before they start spilling over into fat, because of this inefficiency, these stores don't even have to be full for your body to now take this free-floating sugar and want to turn it into into fat. So the more insulin resistant you are, the worse this nutrient partitioning process goes. So the worse that you're able to take the glucose and actually drive it into the muscle cell to use it as glycogen or energy, and the higher likelihood you have to actually just store it as fat.